Competition continues to heat up in integrated graphics, as Intel has just released their newest generation of low-powered laptop chips, which supposedly bring handsome improvements to gaming performance. Intel's Lunar Lake Core Ultra Series 2 lineup features a slew of new Core Ultra 7s, Ultra 5s, and an Ultra 9 at the top. This comes shortly after AMD's Ryzen AI300 series, which we've seen firsthand delivering a leap in performance per watt. This new ZenBook S14 from Asus is what we're looking at today to get our first hands-on experience with Intel's new Lunar Lake architecture. Our test subject inside is the Core Ultra 7 256, paired with 16 gigabytes of memory, and it features eight CPU cores. That's four P cores and four E cores, a 45 tops NPU, and most interestingly, an eight core XE2 Arc 140V iGPU. Intel is claiming the Core Ultra 9 288V, equipped with the very same iGPU we have here, beats AMD's AI9 HX370 chip in gaming by 16% on average. Now, the ARC 140V in this Ultra 7256V is limited to 100 megahertz slower maximum frequency than in the Ultra 9, and we're limited to half the amount of system memory, that's 16 gigabytes of total system memory. The Ryzen AI9 365 with its Radeon 880M has 24 gigs, while the AI9 HX370 890M system we tested has 32 gigabytes of shared memory, though the memory featured in this ZenBook is faster than in any of them. So we likely won't see quite the same level of performance given the limitations of this particular system. The default base power of the Ultra 9 is also 30 watts, which is nearly double the 17 watts base of the Ultra 7 256V. However, we can of course bump this chip into the full performance mode in the My Asus app we have here, since it's an Asus laptop. Other laptops will of course have their own app to do this as well. This means the Ultra 7 will settle in at about 28 watts, just shy of the Ultra 9's 30 watts. So then, how does it fare? Is Intel able to take the integrated graphics crown from reigning king Radeon? And how many of these laptops will you need to equal one microwave? The answer is about 33, but with today's video sponsor, thankfully you don't have to cook it on 33 laptops, just one microwave. Hey fella, are you hungry? Oh, you are? Well, why don't you eat something? Like a chef prepared meal from today's sponsor, Factor. Factor makes fighting back that hunger easy by taking the stress out of meal planning. No more waiting in line at the grocery store only to get home and remember you forgot something after you already started cooking. Fresh chef prepared meals are literally delivered straight to you with a menu of over 35 meals to choose from per week. Factor even includes meals for dietary restrictions like keto, vegan, or vegetarian, and more. Better yet, skipping the grocery store is now cheaper than takeout and tastier too. In just two minutes, you can have a restaurant quality meal ready to eat. Name a takeout place that can deliver faster. Oh, wait. No, seriously, I will wait. All right, done waiting. Back to why Factor is the best way to eat. Once you get started with Factor, if you need to increase or decrease your meals per week, or even pause or reschedule your orders, you can now do so at any time. It really is that easy. Speaking of easy, cleaning up after Factor is as simple as throwing away the empty container. I'll take that over a pile of pots, pans, and plates any day of the week. The convenience Factor offers makes it super easy for people like me, who sometimes get so into what I'm doing that I forget to do anything besides work. And now I can actually stay on track of eating because I only have to step away for two minutes to have a full meal ready for me. They even have snacks and smoothies that make those little in-between meal munchies easier to take care of. Step up the way you eat and check out Factor for yourself. You can head to my link in the video description below to get 50% off and free shipping on your first Factor box and 20% off your next month of orders with code UFD50. That's U-F-D-F-I-F-T-Y. Huge thanks to Factor for sponsoring. For our tests, we have the Windows Power Plan set to best performance unless noted otherwise. We're starting off with 3D Mark Time Spy where we come to find that the Arc 140V has the horses to carry this chip to victory. Even in its default power configuration at 17 watts, the XE2 powered Ultra 7 is nipping at the heels of the Ryzen AI 9 HX370 at just half of its 35 watt base TDP. That is seriously impressive. It's clear the CPU is lacking given the score, but that GPU rips at over 4,000 points in full power mode. But moving on to our first game benchmark, Cyberpunk 2077, and we see that, huh? 
The Intel chip is being vested by the 880M. It does look to beat the RG Ally X, but Intel was talking a big game comparing it to the 890M. They didn't even bother comparing the 880M to their new chip, so why isn't it able to beat it? Well, we initially suspected it's largely due to the lack of driver support, more so than the memory or clock speed limitations of this Ultra 7. But after retesting several games a week later with the official drivers for these new chips, performance was just about identical within a couple frames of the old driver. We kept testing and nothing got better. One of the games we were most hopeful for was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, which initially saw it performing way beyond the Radeon 880M and even suffered some visual artifacts. The good news is the artifacting seems to be fixed with the new drivers, but performance is sadly about the same, still around 30% behind the 880M in this title. Some titles even seem to bounce off of a CPU bottleneck, which isn't surprising given the CPU score and time spy and the CPU benchmarks we'll take a look at after the gaming ones. And while Call of Duty is perhaps the most disappointing result, there is a silver lining with the performance of several other games we tested. ARC's most favorable showing comes from No Man's Sky, as it sees the Intel chip pulling ahead of the A80M equipped AI9 on both average and 1% lows. It even looks to edge out the 890M while sucking less juice very nice. In Far Cry 6, we also see some promising figures from the ARC 140V when comparing the lower wattage results, again demonstrating greater efficiency at lower wattages compared to the 880M equipped AI9. Grand Theft Auto 5, however, reminds us that Intel still has plenty of work to do as the Ultra 7 lags behind the 880M considerably once again. To throw another wrench in our results though, Helldivers 2 sees the 880M and the ARC 140V equipped Intel chip performing neck and neck, and only a frame apart on average. Similarly, Spider-Man Miles Morales sees the 140V roughly matching the A80M as it averaged a couple frames ahead while presenting slightly weaker lows. In Borderlands 3, we see the A80M is again able to flex its muscles at 28 watts as it pulls 26% ahead of the Intel chip, though they were almost equal at 17 watts. With Baldur's Gate 3, we decided to test it in both the default DirectX 11 API as well as Vulkan. We do see that there are some slight advantages to the average for the ARC GPU and a slight increase for the 1% low on the 880M with Vulkan. I wouldn't look too closely at it though, as it's really all in the same ballpark. Overall, we're looking at a mixed bag with Intel's new iGPU. If we look at the average result from all nine games at 28 watts from both chips, we see that the 880M is only 11% ahead of the ARC 140V for average frame rates. Not bad. So we don't want to discount the fact that Intel is now more competitive than ever before in the graphics race. The biggest takeaway is perhaps how well the chip performs at reduced wattages. This will likely prove advantageous in upcoming handhelds that May include this chip, as we're of course always looking to squeeze the most out of every watt. In the last generation, the Radeon 780M was the clear choice for integrated graphics gaming. However, this time consumers can look forward to greater variety and competition as Intel has begun to close in on AMD. But while we're here, why don't we also take a look at performance outside of purely gaming. In Cinebench 2024, it's no surprise that the 8-core Ultra 7 is well behind the 10 and 12-core AI9s. The unfortunate part is the fact that it also lags about 5% behind in single thread performance. In Geekbench 6, the Ultra 7 puts out a very similar showing compared against the AI9s. When we compare it to a wider variety of chips, it falls more in line with previous generation Ryzen chips and position between the Apple M1 and M1 Pro. Puget Bench for creators offers automated benchmarks for Adobe Cloud products, so we're using it to take a look at Premiere Pro performance. And we're once again watching the AI9 365 beat it in watt for watt efficiency since it's got more cores to use that 28 watt budget on. This is likely why the Ultra 7 holds up so well at 17 watts in many games. There's only eight cores to feed, and so games are often happier with that power being used for the iGPU, though the low CPU benchmark scores and high CPU usage in games indicates the processor could sometimes use more CPU power as the GPU begins to outpace it at higher wattages. It's a tough balance when you're limited on power. Switching gears to AI performance will first look at Opera's large language model browser benchmark. Using the AI Ready profile, the Core Ultra 7 256V achieves 13.9 tokens per second, a first token latency of 2.6 seconds, and a model load time of 0.8 seconds. This is well behind the AI9 processors from AMD, if it means anything to you. In Geekbench AI, we also see the Ultra 7 trailing the AI9 365 by around 20%. I guess putting AI in the name was justified by AMD here. All right. 
So what do we think of the XC2 ARC 140V? As we've discussed, we think Intel is moving in the right direction. They're continuing to bet on gaming and are delivering welcome jumps to gaming capabilities with their new chips. They've still got plenty of work to do if they plan on taking the crown, which they no doubt want to do, but for now, this is certainly enough to make for a competitive line of products for gamers and professionals, so long as the price is appropriate. As for that 16% better versus AMD HX370 figure Intel has advertised, it's probably mostly down to cherry-picked results, though the Ultra 9 is likely at least a few percentage points better than the Ultra 7 we looked at today. But in our next video, we want to dig deeper into power consumption, heat, battery life, and more to further expand on what these chips are capable of. This will come in the form of a review of the ZenBook S14, since it's hard to disconnect those characteristics from the specific device that we're talking about. Things like what sort of cooling we're looking at, the battery capacity and vendor specific software included. So we'll next focus on the laptop as a complete package, including how this chip contributes to the heat, noise, and battery life. Things are looking more competitive this generation, and we're excited to bring you guys more in-depth reviews.